Good morning, good morning. I'm Flora Sage, your life coach, to help you get a life and business that you are freaking excited about. <laughs> so, um, I thought that I would pop in here and join you with my morning cup of coffee uh, and let you see what I do when I come back from three weeks of vacation. <laughs> so this is the beginning of the year. And one of the things that I personally do is pick a word for the year. Now, if you're in part of my groups, if you're in the One Degree Shift Tribe, if you're in the Mastermind Mafia, you've heard all about this, you probably already have your word, but what's the point of choosing a word for the year? So, <clears throat> when I first heard of this concept many, many years ago, I thought it was bullshit. Because I was like, why would choosing a word at the beginning of the year matter? And so, <clears throat> okay, I was sick. I think I had COVID during the holiday break. We took a rapid test. It was negative, but I had all the symptoms. Anywho, so years ago, I heard about setting a word for the year. And really, I, I didn't think it would impact me as much as it did. And so what I did was I experimented with it. I said, fuck it. You know, I'm just going to pick a word and see what happens. <laughs> I, I chose a word. I put it on a sticky note. And I put that sticky note. This is actually my word for the year, which I'll tell you what it is in just a moment. But I put that sticky note on my bathroom mirror. And every day when I went into my bathroom, I saw the word. And something subtle shifted within me. And I was kind of shocked about it. And I was like, oh my gosh. So before I go into this any further, let me know if you're watching this live. Let me know if you are watching the replay. Put hashtag live, hashtag replay in the comments. I want to give some shout outs to the people that I... Sorry about that. <laughs> I got a notification. Hello, Rick. Hello, Stephanie, Erica, Ash, Gail. Hello. Hello, Clark. Oh, my goodness. So let me know. Hello, Denise. Uh, let me know in the comments if you're watching live, if you're watching the replay. Hello, Nicole. Yay. Also, let me know if you have ever chosen a word for the year before and what you thought of it. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Stephanie. Woohoo. <laughs> I love it. So, <clears throat> okay, going back to my story. So yes, something subtle shifted in my life when I saw that word on, um, on my mirror. Hi, Mary Jo. And since then, I have chosen a word for the year. Now, a couple years ago, I actually chose a word for the year as kind of the main theme, and then Every month, I chose kind of a subsidiary word. So Michelle says, I've chosen a word, but it was through your planning posse parties. Woohoo! We still have those planning parties every single month inside of the One Degree Shift Tribe and the Mastermind Mafia. It's so freaking epic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, hi Liz. So this year, um, well actually, so this past year, the energy, of course, was all over the place, but it was actually one of my best years yet. I finished my seventh book, which I am super pumped about, The One Degree Shift, and <clears throat> hi, Moretta, and um, it was one of my best years, even though um, it was one of the most challenging years that I've had in a really long time, it was one of my best years. And so coming into this year in a new state, we're now in Arizona, I moved from Wisconsin here in September, um, I wanted to really be very intentional about my time. And so that's the word that I chose for this next year, intentional. And so I know it's backwards for you guys, but I literally have sticky notes all over my house <laughs> that say intentional. I have one on my mirror. I have one in my office. Right now I'm in my dining room. This is a little fiber art that I created for myself many years ago. But <clears throat> so I want you to think about what type of 
energy do you want to remind yourself of throughout this year? What is your, well, for, okay, first of all, I want you to write in the comments what your goal for this year is. The main number one goal that you have for yourself this year. And don't pick like these giant things. Just pick one small goal. It could be to feel stronger and healthier in your body. So let's just say that in order for, for that to happen, you choose to work out several times a week. Okay, so then what word do you feel would embody that energy of feeling strong? Okay, so Gina says, freedom from this shitty relationship. Perfect, okay. So I want you to think about that. So at the end of the year, 12 months from now, what do you hope to have accomplished this year? Now, I have a lot of stuff that, is, that I have planned. Well, actually not a lot. Compared to other years, I have barely anything. <laughs> Hi, Richard. And, but the things that I do have planned, I know are going to need my 100% attention. Like, I can't be fractured. I can't be scattered. I literally have to be extremely intentional. And during the break, I hired a new coach. I, I actually started working with a new healer. So I have set the gears in motion. So Ash says, I've been thinking of the word intentions. I waste time on things that waste my energy. So maybe the word focus possibly. Ooh, okay. So Ash, when you think of um, wasting time and wasting your energies, okay, does focus really embody the energy that you want to hold? Because you could be wasting time on TikTok, yet you're hyper-focused on TikTok. <laughs> I love TikTok. Hi, Ben. <laughs> so think about really getting clear on that energy that you want to embody. You know what I mean? Um, yes. <laughs> Hi, Tara. She says, this sounds like me. Focus. Awesome. Yep. I have focus for this year, too. Woo! <laughs> nice, Gail. Yeah. And so... The reason why that I want you to kind of pick apart your word that you choose is because sometimes if you pick a word that really isn't fully embodying the essence that you want to embody throughout the year, it could just kind of feel off and you, you could, because I mean, this has happened to me more times than not where I've chosen a word and I've tried to embody it and just, you know, and it just falls flat and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> What the hell? So then I go back to my intention. I go back to my goal and say, okay, what would feel like a better word? Hi, Reggie. Hi, Shakina. So Shakina says, being organized and productive with my business and my health. Okay, so what does being organized look like? What does being productive look like? Okay. Um, one word on organization. I started my business in 1997 as a home organizer. I would go into people's homes. I would gut rooms, like literally take everything out of a room, deep clean it from top to bottom, clean the stuff that we were bringing in and only the stuff that the person loved. Everything else we sold, we donated, or we recycled or threw away depending on whatever. But um, that's how I started working with people. And the thing with organizing is if you don't declutter and get rid of that stuff that no longer serves you, that you no longer love and use, you're just organizing and reorganizing and reorganizing the piles of stuff that you're going it, to, and it's really going to go back to that disorganized state if you don't minimize and get rid of the stuff that is not um, productive in your life and that's not really meant to still be there. That's one of the things. Hi, Regina. That's one of the things that my partner and I are doing is we're minimizing so much. Like we went from an over 2,000 square foot house in Wisconsin to a 1,400 square foot house in Arizona. <laughs> and 
We have a single level before we had a basement and a huge garage and all this other stuff. And Tink, <laughs> go get him. Go ahead, go, go. <laughs> He's so excited. But anyway, so, um, sorry, I'm getting all kinds of messages and notifications. So we've been very intentional and very methodical about what we choose to keep. And I mean, we, we minimized a lot before we came here. And then when we got here, we're like, why did we bring all this stuff with us? So we're getting rid of all this other stuff because we came here because for one, we were done with the Midwest winters. And two, we're very um, focused on a goal that we're meeting within the next two years. And so in order to meet that goal, we needed to start minimizing. We needed to start downsizing and getting rid of the stuff that we don't use and we're just kind of holding on to. Hi, Carrie. Um, so Regina says, hi, I'm clearing. Wait, I am clearing are the items that don't serve us. Nice, you're clearing out the items that don't serve you. Perfect. Gail says, I've been doing that, although I'm sure I have way more stuff than you would approve of. No, it's not about, I mean, that's just one of the things is that whatever is in your space, if you love it, that's perfect. But in order to, because, you know, like I said, a lot of people choose, I want to, I want to be more organized. Make sure that you're organizing the things that matter and not just moving shit around because clutter essentially is a museum of shit that you thought would make you happy. Really. Um, so Michelle says sustainability, small, slow changes in the right direction towards my goal. Instead of jumping in and going all in, I'm taking it slow so the changes actually sticks. Oh my gosh, Michelle, yes. And that is exactly what my book is about, The One Degree Shift, Discover the Simplicity of Lasting Change. Now, so often on this time of year, during New Year's, people are like, oh my God, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do this. And they like literally, <laughs> They, they make these giant changes and two weeks later or three weeks later or a month later, they're left wondering what the hell happened. Well, what happened was that, that kind of uh, slingshot that happens when we try to make too many changes too quickly. And this whole book is about how you can Embrace change, because change is the only thing that we can count on. This book teaches you how to recognize where you're at completely and fully, where you're going, and it shows you the roadmap on how to make those little one degree shifts. And what is a one degree shift? A little one degree shift is putting this sticky note up where I can see it to remind myself, oh yeah, today I'm gonna be more intentional. I'm gonna to try to be more intentional with the videos that I make, with the content that I produce, with the food that I eat, with the substances that I put in my body. This is decaf with honey, yum. Um, and of course, some people might say decaf isn't healthy because of the chemical process that they go through with the, the you know decaf process. I can't do caffeine, I'm already wired enough as it is and it triggers my anxiety. So I'm gonna put up with some chemicals so that I can have my one cup of decaf. That's, that's, that is something that I'm choosing intentionally. And so give yourself permission. Give yourself permission to say, I don't have to do all of this at once. I don't have to make a 180 shift. I don't have to make a 90 degree shift or a 45 degree shift. I literally today only can choose to commit to making one tiny shift today and then tomorrow make another tiny shift and then another one and then another one and then another one and before long you're going to be pointing in the direction that you wanted to go for years that has been scary as shit because I know I've done that I've made giant massive shifts before and it literally sent my body in shock it literally sent my body in shock and so you don't have to do that. And that's the whole point of this book is I teach you how to embrace change and recognize, okay, sometimes change fucking sucks. Sometimes change is fucking awesome. But the key is to recognize it doesn't have to suck, okay? 
And how you create that change is doing it one baby step at a time. And this word for your year can usher you into that little one degree shift, that little tiny baby step, that little nudge that you know you want, you know that you need, you know that you desire that. So Shakina says, um, the last three years I dealt with a lot of trauma and literally lost the old me. For 2021, I want to reinvent myself into a healthy, powerful, successful mom, girlfriend, and businesswoman. I know you and you're already all these things. <laughs> Part of it too, so thank you for this. Part of this too is recognizing and honoring who you already are and saying, fuck yeah, I'm a great mom. Fuck yeah, I'm an amazing businesswoman. Hell yes, I rock. And just honoring who you are. So many of us don't do that. Um, so Tara says, it's so hard to minimize when I know I will end up using it eventually and I don't like wasting money. It, it, I sound like a hoarder. Okay, this is a huge thing for a lot of people. So in minimalism or in the world of being very intentional with what you have in your home, if it can take you 20 minutes or less or $20 or less to replace, and you haven't used it in several years, and you can't pinpoint when the next time you're gonna use it is, gift it, sell it, uh, donate it. I mean, especially if you haven't used it in a really long time. Everything that we have in our life has an energetic weight to it. And it, it's got that energetic consequence. And so if you see a closet full of stuff that you never ever use, you're probably not gonna use it if it's shoved in a closet. Take it out, put it in your space and see it. Then if you use it when it's out, perfect, keep it, keep it out. Have it so that you can use it constantly. But if you have shit packed in a closet, you're not gonna use it if it's packed in a closet, well, unless it's clothes, but even still. Like the other day, I literally got, well, not the other day, this was probably like a month ago, I got rid of a third of my clothes. I was like, because I, I was like, gosh, I have nothing to wear. And I'm like, I have, I have a whole closet full of stuff, but I have my favorites. And I literally took everything out of my closet and tried every single piece of clothes that I have on. And if it pissed me off in any way, because you know those shirts that you like, but they're like, they're weird and you got to like yank them down all the time or they bunch up someplace or what. And I'm like, no, I'm not even going to go there. I had one that I love, but it was really itchy. I'm like, fuck that. Life's too short to be itchy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was like, nope. So, I mean, really be mindful because like, okay, if you're wasting your time dealing with stuff, managing stuff, organizing stuff that you never use, you are taking, you're robbing yourself of your life. Time's the only thing we can't get back, okay? Money, you can replace. Objects, you can replace. Your time, you can't. So that's the biggest thing that impacted us when we started to minimize is we were tired of organizing stuff that we never use and managing stuff that we never use. It's like, really, why, why are we keeping this? Why? So um, Wendy said, my word for the year is abundance because I plan on generating abundance in all areas of my life. Ooh, that's so good. Yay. Bobby says, I have pants that it's like one day these, <laughs> these will be, or these could be shorts. Yeah, chop them off. If you want shorts, chop them off and have shorts. Seriously, literally, this is one of the things that will change your life forever. If you recognize time is the only thing you can't get back. And this next year, like we all have felt the impact of 2020 and the restrictions and all this other stuff. I mean, Wisconsin was a pretty open state anyway, but one of the reasons why we chose Arizona is because it is a green state. Like you can pretty much, like all the kids are in school here. All the businesses, restaurants are open. Like I think 99% of them are dine-in. There's just a couple that don't have dine-in and those are actually just like the fast food places. But hi Cam, but um, 
we literally chose this place very intentionally. And so when I was thinking of my word for the year and I was like, oh, intentionally, mm, intentional, yeah, that's perfect. And so, like I said, think about the essence and the energy that you want to embody, that you wanna hold, that you wanna remind yourself of for this year. Again, think about the goal that you have for the end of the year. What do you want to accomplish? Now, some of you might be saying, I don't know, Flora, this feels like a resolution and I never keep my resolutions. I think they're bullshit, which I think New Year's resolutions are bullshit anyway. I don't set New Year's resolutions. This is one of the reasons why I set a word because a word is something that I can embody. Hi, Rainy. A word is something that reminds me of my purpose, of my, of my focus, of what I'm really meant to do in any given time. And like I said, one year I chose a word for the year, which is you know, kind of like the overarching word. And then I chose another word, kind of that subsidiary word um, each month that would kind of make it even more fine tuned because each month is very different. January here, oh my God, you guys, it's gonna be 70 today. I'm so pumped. Yay, this is my kind of winter weather, you know what I'm saying? In the place that I used to live at, I'll tell you what the temperature is. Oh my God, I'm so glad I don't live there anymore. Um, oh no, I haven't synced my phone yet today. Well, anyway, I used to live in Wisconsin. It's probably like 23 or 24 today. No, thank you. So. In any case, every single month, the energy is different. So January is very different than June. So if you want to choose that overarching word for the year, like focus, let's just say, or productivity, or um, fun, or dance, or whatever it is that you want, and then every month say, okay, what do I have planned this month? Do I have vacation planned? Do I have... A dental surgery, I've got a dental surgery coming up. I'm getting a bridge taken out and they're gonna be removing three implants and they're gonna be doing a bone graft. So I'm gonna be literally missing these back three teeth for like um, six months, <laughs> literally. But I'm totally cool with that. So um, Michelle says 31 degrees here today, balmy for Northern Minnesota. That is very balmy. Uh, Bobby said ring, perfect. So, I mean, so think about, you know, what do I have going on this month? What do I have going on? Um, do I have, I don't even know, whatever. So think about that, that energy for the month. Um, are you going to be writing a book? Are you going to be doing a special project? Are you going to be moving? Are you going to be selling something? Whatever it is, okay? So you can choose that little subsidiary word or that little kind of add-on word for specific months if you want to embody something else, kind of like layering um, energies. So let me know if you guys resonate with this. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you haven't, or let's just say you are um, kind of toying between a couple words, give yourself permission to use your intuition and put your hand on your heart, close your eyes and say, okay, what is my intention for this year? What do I hope to accomplish by the end of the year? And don't choose 10 different things. Give yourself permission to just choose one. And some people might go, oh my God, but there's so many other things to focus on and there's so many, all this stuff that I need or want to do. That's fine. When you choose the word that's from your intuition, that's from your heart, it impacts every facet of your body. When you choose the goal, like my goal this year is to be intentional. Now I have other smaller goals and those smaller goals require that I show up very intentionally. So let me know if this is helping you. Post in the comments what your word for this year or this month is and if you're interested in pre-purchasing my book that this book officially comes out on january 11th 111 which is next monday i'm so excited and we are having for everyone who pre-purchases this book 
We have a bonus workshop that's gonna be at 11.11 Arizona time in the morning. I am so freaking excited. So I'm gonna post the link in the comments once this, once this video is finished on the page that you can pre-order the book. I am so pumped. We already have reviews coming in on Barnes and Noble from the preview readers. I'm so excited, oh my goodness. Yay! <laughs> All right, so post in the comments what your word for the year is. And if you want my help and guidance on how to choose your word, whoops. All right. <laughs> yes, you can pre-order the book. Here, I'll actually post the link right now. I'm so excited, you guys. Oh, this book has been so many years in the making. <laughs> so many years in the making. I've been actively working with, with editors. I've worked with two editors for this book <clears throat> the last three years. So we've been editing this book for the last three years and shifting it and just all the things. And so editing actually takes a long time for a book. So... Okay, I'm going to post the link right now. This is the pre-order page for the book. Ooh, Regina said self-worth. Ooh, I love it. Yes, that is so good. And I love that you're here, Regina. I love you guys. I love seeing everybody's names that I've like, oh my God, hello. <laughs> Some of you guys have been with me for a really long time. I love it. Yay. All right, let me know in the comments what your word for the year is or what your goal is. And then if you um, want me to help you with that, let me know. Um, Nicole said, thank you, Flora. I thought I had chosen a word, but I'm going to fine tune it. Yay. I love it. Christy said, happy. Shakina said, reinvented. Ooh, love it, you guys. This is so good. Bobby said, congratulations on your new one degree book. Cheers. Thank you. And I've got a big stack of books right here. This is only like a third of them. I've already signed and sent out um, the first, like, how many was it? Like 30 something. Um, and I have a whole nother couple of boxes coming. <laughs> Kim said strength and balance, two words, perfect. I love it. Shakina says, since Flora Pixie, yes. <laughs> yes, I've known you for a very long time. Um, Regina, you are too fun. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All right, so I would encourage you, once you have chosen your word, because we all need reminders. We all have life happen to us and for us. Um, some days we're like on our shit and we are like, hell yeah. And other times we're like, I just want to go back to bed. <laughs> Give yourself a break and set reminders. Put a, a new home screen on your phone. Get out these sticky notes and write, like I literally have a pack of sticky notes Okay, and I'm gonna be putting this all over my, my, um, my house. I already have it in like five places, I think. But today I'm gonna go on to Canva, canva.com, and I'm gonna make a new home screen for my phone, or a lock screen, I should say, so I can see it all the time. Well, I'm not all the time. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not attached to my phone all the time, but you know, I know myself and I know there are days when I'm like on top of everything and then other days where I'm just like, nope, I'm just gonna do what I can and then that's it and I'm giving myself a break, you know? And that's all we can hope for. That's all we can hope for is give us, you know, hang on, I kind of feel me getting on a soapbox a little bit here. Don't be so hard on yourself, okay? Please, don't be so hard on yourself. Life is messy, change is scary, and we never know what each day is gonna bring. We never know what day is gonna, you know, we have no idea. And in my life, I feel myself getting beclumped. In my life, I have had so many cosmic two by fours up the side of the head. 
where you're going about your day and all of a sudden, oh yeah, your mom just passed away. Or your dad died. Or your son got in a head-on collision accident with a drunk driver. Thank God he walked away from it. Um, life happens. And it sucks sometimes. And sometimes it is glorious. Like my kids were here. Both of them were here during the holidays. Oh, my soul needed it so much. It was... So it was like the best holiday we've ever had, ever. And the week before, I was literally in bed, well, actually on the couch, with a fever for three days. And I had to surrender and just be in that week. And so, like I said, we never know what life is going to throw at us. But what we can control, what we can regulate is our attitude, our mindset. And the ability to give ourselves a damn break already and to say, today I'm going to show up to the best of my ability and I know that my best is going to change from day to day. Some days I might feel like I'm on top of the world and other days, like I said, I might feel like I need to go back to bed. But regardless of how my physical energy is and the actions and the events and the, the things that I'm choosing to do, the one thing that cannot be influenced if I don't let it is my mindset. And it took me years to get this. It took me years. I thought mindset shit was just, I thought it was bullshit. I was like, mindset, mindset. It's all about the actions, baby. That's a lie. Mindset trumps everything. Mindset trumps action. Mindset trumps what you think is going to happen. If your mindset is shit and you do all the right actions, you're not going to get the results. You're not. And again, I got all this in my book. <laughs> Pre-order the book. This is good stuff. But... You got to give yourself permission to help your mindset along. And that's what the word for the year does. It helps remind you, oh yeah, I want to be more intentional with my day. So far, it's day four from the new year. So far, hell yes, I've been so freaking on top of shit. But I'm only giving myself permission to focus on one main thing every day and of course what I've been doing is just doing that first thing and I'm like yeah so the rest of the day is gravy I'm like hell yeah I already accomplished my goal for the day <laughs> cool but some days you know maybe tomorrow I wake up and I'm gonna be like yeah I just want to stay in bed <laughs> so my intention for the day is to just show up and do the best that I can with the energy that I have and that's it so Regardless of what you have planned for today, tomorrow, this month, this next week, this next year, give yourself permission to just be fully present and to give yourself a break and choose the word that you feel will help you show up for you and your future self. That brings me to another thing that I want you to do. So there is a site I'm getting the link right now. I'm copying it and I gotta go back to this page. It's called Future Me. Hang on, I'm putting this in the comments. Okay. I just posted it in the comments. Write a letter to yourself. Today, click that link, and I want you to write a letter to yourself for January 4th of 2022. And give yourself permission to say, hey, self, whatever your name is, this is what, so today is January 4th, 2021, and this is my letter to you, to my future self. Say whatever it is you want to say and then go. 
And what's going to happen is whenever, and like you can actually set when you get, you can do one year, three years, five years, or you can choose any random date. Hi, Cora. And the cool thing about this is when you write that letter to yourself, all of a sudden you're going to forget about it. You're going to go on about your day. You're going to go on about your life. You're going to go on about whatever it is you're doing. Randomly out of the blue, this letter from your past self shows up in your future. And then you can read it. It's huge. So, do yourself a solid and click that link. Like I said, it's futureme.org. Write yourself a letter. And remind yourself what your goal is that you're setting it right now for the end of the year what your word for the year is, and what you hope to feel a year from now, or three months from now, or six months from now. And really allow yourself to trust and believe in you. Believe that you can accomplish this. Because like I said, mindset is, mindset trumps everything. And I, like I said, I fought mindset tooth and nail. I'm like, mindset is bullshit. All I need to do is the right actions. No. The right actions with a shitty mindset are going to give you shitty results. And this is one way. Picking a word for the year is one way to help your mindset. Following the one degree shift method and saying, where am I at today? Where do I want to be? And what's one thing I can do today? Not five, not 10, not 20. What's one baby step? That little tiny one degree shift. Just, that's it. One thing, that's it. One thing, that's it. Hang on, I see that we've got some comments. Do, do, do. Oh, hello, Tonette. Tonette, I am living in Arizona. Private message me, we need to have lunch. <laughs> Yay! Bobby says, hang on, Bobby, how do I get an autographed, autographed copy for a gift? Um, email support at floresage.com for autographed copies. I'm actually going to put this in a comment. So email support at floresage.com and we will hook you up with the link. Yay! All right, um, I know, I'm so excited. I've been here since um, September. I live in surprise, I'm excited. Shakina says, yes, I've done this. My letter from three years ago popped up a few months ago. I wrote it in YTT. I love it, so good, yay! <laughs> so freaking good, I love it. Okay, so. Uh, Susan says, love, last trying to find a job, new nurse practitioner since July. Yay, so good. <laughs> so good. Yes, I am in Arizona. I love it. it. I love the weather here. It's so freaking good. We moved here in mid-September. We were here in August. Finding a home to rent for the next two years. And it has been incredible. All right, so if you're watching the replay, make sure that you continuously, what am I trying to say? <laughs> if you're watching the replay or if you're watching this live and you haven't chosen your word, choose your word and then come back to this video and post your word for this year in the comments. Also, like I said, go to this uh, link that I posted in the comments, um, futureme.org, write a letter to yourself one year from today and send it one year from today. And this is one of the things is when you start receiving these letters, your whole world is going to change. You're going to be like, Oh my God, I did this. Like I accomplished something. I, and I mean, you can even set it for three months out. You can set it for three months out. You can set it for six months out. But when you future trip your goals, when you future trip your life, and say, okay, one year from now, if I stay intentional, or if I stay focused, if I stay productive, if I stay, let me see some of the other words. Hang on, let me look. Do, do, do. If I stay happy, if I continue to reinvent myself, if I continue to focus on my self-worth, <coughs> 
if I, hang on, let me, let me look at more words. If I am sustainable, if I am organized, if I am productive, if I am focused, if I am free from the shitty relationship, then how is my life going to feel? What's going to happen? How am I going to show up? What version of myself is the world going to experience and see? Cora said, can it be a sentence or just one word? It can be both, okay? It can be both. So you can have one word and then you can kind of wrap it in a sentence so that that sentence can really bring about that energy of like, yeah, this is absolutely the word. Like my word is intentional. And my, cause I've got this five minute journal that I use in the morning and it says I am, and then I put very intentional with my actions today or very intentional at taking the day off or whatever it is. So I'm, I'm bringing that word into whatever it is that I'm doing. So yes, you can have it be a sentence if you want to. You can also have it just be a single word and then kind of have that sentence um, along with it. Hang on, I think I'm missing some comments. I'm gonna refresh the page. And I need to blow my nose, I apologize. I know that's so attractive, huh? <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, Dre, responded to Susan and says, that seems crazy being that you're in the middle of the global pandemic. Do you think it's just because you're new? Hope you manifest what you're looking for. I'm studying to become a nurse. Yes, there's a lot of, actually there's a lot of people that I know. I actually have a very good friend of mine who is studying to become a physician's assistant and a homeopathic doctor. So good. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of nurses that I know that got laid off because they stop taking regular patients and the influx of COVID patients never happened. So they lost funding and they got laid off. So it's very sad. All right, so I feel like this is complete for today. I am gonna be going live every day this week. Um, is there anything else I wanna share today? Like I said, give yourself a break, okay? Life's not perfect. People aren't perfect. Life sometimes sucks. Sometimes it's freaking glorious. And every day our energy is a little bit different than it was the day before, okay? So the whole purpose of living is to be in the moment. The whole purpose of living is to just be. It's not being some random ass version of yourself that you think you need to be. It's about being you and bringing you to the table all the time. And that's not easy sometimes, especially if you're in a shitty relationship or if you're with people that don't value you or if you have shit from your past that causes you to act a certain way. Like I freaking, trust me, <laughs> trust me, okay? I have been codependent for years and this past September I got my five year chip from Codependency Anonymous. And that was the hardest thing I think I've ever had to do was work through my codependency bullshit. And I learned that when I was a young child, um, my mom was very judgmental and I learned to be a chameleon because I, I changed and morphed into who I thought she wanted me to be. And that was really hard for me to come to terms with. I talk all about it in my book. <laughs> this is like a tell all, let me tell you. Um, but it, it, it's something that when you recognize that life is really what we choose it to be, the good, the bad, the ugly, it's, it's all how we choose to perceive it and all how we choose to show up every day. It's all how we choose to show up every day. And it's not about trying to impress the neighbors or impress random ass people, whatever. It's like, how can I show up for me today? So again, think about what you want to embody this year. Nicole said, 
I love this. Real quick and short, my floral business is moving to the next level and I'm now an ex ex um, exclusive florist for the newest, coolest, most amazing hotel in town. Yay! I love it. Congratulations! Woohoo! Um, thanks to you for giving, or I'm sorry, thanks to you for getting, giving me the courage to start on this path three years ago. Yay! I am so super excited. Woohoo! That's why I can't let you go. You're like my security blanket. <laughs> Your advice and your guidance works. Thank you. Oh my God, you're totally gonna make me cry. Thank you. Oh, I so appreciate you, Nicole. And yeah, I, you know, I just, I love it. And so the thing is, is that three years ago, when we started working together, you chose, you chose to have this in your future. And then, so now fast forward three years, this is what you have now. Remember we were talking about like being being like exclusive and being like the VIP and up leveling and kind of setting yourself apart from the regular everyday old floral shop to the exclusive and you were just like, oh, and I heard something click and you had that vision of what you wanted in the future. Now, three years later, you have that. Yes, I totally have goosebumps. And you were just like, oh, Hallelujah. And it doesn't happen overnight, but that vision that you have all of a sudden like that, the opportunity and the possibility, all of a sudden you're like, oh, wow. Like what if that actually could happen? And then what do you do? You take those little tiny baby steps. That's what this is all about. You take those little tiny baby steps and then before you know it, all of a sudden now you landed a deal of a lifetime. All of a sudden, now you have a life that you are like, holy fuck, like how did I get this? This is crazy. And it seems like it happens overnight. That's what the one degree shift is all about. Doing those tiny, 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 tiny little actions. And most of it is mindset stuff. Most of this is a mindset shift. Tiny little actions and then all of a sudden, whammo, you have that thing that you've been wanting forever. Now it landed in your lap and you're like, wait a minute, what the hell just happened? <laughs> but that's how it works. Woohoo! I love it. <laughs> Tara said, I needed to hear this today. Yay. So freaking good. Oh my goodness. Yay. Um, Cora said, I, whoops, hang on. Um, I've studied, I've studied to be a vet tech, but needed to get myself back into it. Awesome. Yay. So Carrie said, I have no idea what my word is. So again, think about what your goal is for this year. What do you want to embody this year? Like I said, for me, it's, I need to, well, I want to be intentional. And being intentional feels so freeing and feels so good because I know when I'm very intentional with what I do. Like, let's just say that I'm going to write a series of emails today. I'm not going to, but let's just say that I was, I'm going to. So what I'm gonna do is shut all the other things off, like put my phone on uh, like airplane mode and sit down, shut all the things on my computer except for a Word document and just write the emails. And I'm gonna set my timer because I'm ADHD. <laughs> So I'm gonna set my timer so I can stay focused and just do that. Now the beautiful thing about staying very intentional is I can get it done in so much less time. Hi Jessica, so much less time than if I were to have all this other shit open and all the notifications going and all the things on and I'm, mm -mm, I can't do that. And so, when I am intentional, life feels easy. It feels in flow. So in flow. So think about what you want to accomplish this next year. It could be, and I, I used this you know, um, earlier. Let's just say that you want to start doing yoga. Or, okay, let's just say that you want to start feeling stronger in your body. Okay, so... How could you embody that? How could you bring that about during the year? Well, you could maybe start doing yoga. You could start walking. You could start stretching every day. Stretching is huge for the body. 
And so maybe your word for the year could be stretch in a literal and metaphorical term. You know what I mean? So stretch, let's just say that you say, okay, my word for the year is stretch. So you see it on your, on your, on your bathroom window or bathroom window, your bathroom mirror, stretch. And so you're like, okay, stretch. Woo Yay, you stretched. All of a sudden your body goes, ooh, because you just activated all those muscles that you just extended out and just brought in oxygen. You were breathing deeply. So good. Then what happens all of a sudden is you're like, Maybe after a week of doing that, you're like, you know, I think I might want to take a yoga class or maybe Zumba or whatever. And maybe it feels like a stretch for you to enroll in a class like that. See, so that's the metaphorical energy of stretch. You're kind of stretching yourself into this new version of yourself. So let me know if this helps you, Carrie. Um, but Picking a word for the year is awesome. And like I said before, you can have one word that you can have as like your overarching word for the year. And then each month, because each month has a little bit of a different vibe, a little bit of a different energy, you can choose a secondary word for each month having that big one for the year. So yay, you are very welcome, Carrie. Yay! Uh, Cora said, I wanna pick two words, Steady and healthy. Can I do that? Absolutely. Yeah, you can pick 10 words if you want to. I would recommend picking one or two simply because it helps you stay a little bit more focused and a little bit more intentional. Um, Carrie said, amazing. I've been injured since 2018. Well, there you go. So stretch might be a good one for you. <laughs> I love it. So good. Okay, so I love you guys. I need to get off here. I'm going to go walk my dog. Since the sun came up, it's starting to warm up a little bit more. Yay! Woo hey, Richard. Good morning from the mountains of Idaho. Well, good morning from the desert in Arizona. <laughs> All right. I love you guys so, so much. Again, make sure that you click the links in the comments. Click link number one to pre-order your One Degree Shift book, which comes out on 111 and which is next Monday. So freaking excited. If you did get a pre-order or, if, um, okay, what am I trying to say? If you did get a advanced copy, please make sure that you share your reviews on Barnes and Noble. Amazon is actually not accepting uh, pre-reviews yet, but for everyone who pre-orders the book, we do have a complimentary workshop about the One Degree Shift that starts at 1111 on 111, which is next Monday, 1111 Arizona time, which I'm so freaking pumped for. And then the second thing that I want you to do is click link number two in the comments and write a letter to your future self. It could be three months from now, it could be a year from now, but write a letter to your future self about the energy that you're feeling right now. What is your goal? What is your intention for this next year? And if you, actually I should say, when you meet that goal, how are you gonna show up for the world? Who are you going to be when you reach that goal, when you embody that energy? That's, that's the essence that I want you to write this letter from, okay? All right, I love you all so much. I hope that this serves you, and I'm really excited to read your uh, word for the year or sentence for the year in the comments or wherever it is that you see the, I think it's this way, <laughs> or no wait, this way, I'm not sure. Anyway, wherever it is that the comments are, I'm really excited to read all of your word or sentences for the year. All right, I love you, I hope this serves you. I'll see you back here tomorrow, bye.